We're now going to graph quadratics by properties. Quadratic functions by properties. And by properties we mean we want to be able to look at and very quickly find pieces of information that are important that will give us the general shape of the graph. So this is an alternative to completing the square when we start with ax squared plus bx plus c. But what we're going to do first is show you where it comes from. So we're going to complete the square on this to begin with. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the, this piece right here, the x squared and the bx, and we're going to factor out an a from that. So that's going to leave us with x squared plus b over ax plus some unknown value that we'll get back to in just a minute. We then add c and subtract this a, same a as this one, times whatever that blank is. So that whatever we're adding here, we're subtracting here. So remember, these two get multiplied together to do that. Well, to complete the square, we know that our big B is this value over 2. So it's B over 2A, which we then square to get B squared over 4A squared. So that's what we're going to add. We're going to have B squared over 4A squared and B squared over 4A squared. And notice here that one of the A's cancels from the A squared with this A that we needed. And so we're left with f of x equals a times, complete the square, we just take this value and stick it in. So this is x plus b over 2a squared plus, we need to combine these, so this needs to be a 4a over a 4a. And so we end up with 4ac minus b squared over 4a. And notice this looks similar to, but not exactly the same as, the quadratic formula that we looked at sooner. And it's derived very similarly. It's done by completing the square on the base form. But because of the function that we're dealing with, we're not able to put it on the other side, and so the signs are reversed here, and we get this extra a floating over here. So, now that we have this, let's compare this to our factor, our, our transformational form, which is a times x minus h squared plus k. And if we compare these, then what's inside the parentheses has to match. So minus h has to be b over 2a, or better yet, h is minus b over 2a. And so we can always find h by taking this value and dividing it by 2 times this value and then changing the sign. And that will always give us h, which is the x component of the vertex. The k is equal to this k is 4ac minus b squared over 4a, but that's really complicated. It's actually easier to remember that our point, hk, is really an x, f of x pair, where h is x. So what we really want is our vertex, and this is the first property, the vertex is at b o minus b over 2a, and f of minus b over 2a. In other words, find your value and then plug it into the function to get the matching k. And we'll show an example of this in a minute. The other two properties that you want are the following. We want to also make sure that we have the y-intercept, which is really easy to get, because remember the y-intercept is at 0. So if we plug 0 in to ax squared plus bx plus c, when we plug 0 in, the ax squared goes away and the bx goes away, so all we're left with is c. So that constant at the end gives us our values. Finally, we sometimes want the x-intercept. And this will be more important later. But for now, it's nice to have these points just to make sure we know where they're at. But they're not always easy to graph. So I won't always use them. It depends on what's going on. So these are the three things that we need. These two and the vertex. And for the x-intercept, you have to set equal to 0 and solve. And that's why it's not always easy to do. And I usually find I get enough information with just these two. And this is minus b over 2a and f of minus b over 2a. So those are the properties that we want. So let's show some examples. Let's suppose that g of x equals x squared plus 2x minus 15. And we want to graph this. So we're going to start by saying, well, my h, and this is really important, you have to remember this, it's minus b over 2a, so this is minus 2 over 2 times 1, which is minus 2 over 2, which is minus 1. 
Now that I know what h is, I find k by plugging h minus 1 in to get minus 1 squared plus 2 times minus 1 minus 15. Well, that's 1 minus 2 minus 15, which is minus 16. So my vertex is at minus 1 minus 15. My y-intercept is at 0, that's a minus 15. I just goofed up. This should be a minus 16, not 15 like I wrote. And we also know that we have a x-intercept, and this happens to factor when I set 0 equal to x squared plus 2x minus 15. This factors as x plus 5, x minus 3. So x is at minus 5 and x is at 3. So my x-intercepts are at minus 5, 0 and 3, 0. Notice we have two of them. The only time you'll have one is if it's the vertex. So we go in and we graph our points. So we're going to go, let's graph our orange one first. Back one and down, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So there's our vertex. Our y-intercept has a point at 0, 15. And notice that this is exactly one away from this line. So all we have to do is keep our value, the s our y value the same, but come over here, one unit, and we get our, a mirror point. So this is the y-intercept, and this is the mirror point, which is directly across from it over the uh, axis of symmetry through the vertex. We then can put our purple dots on 3, 4, 5, minus 5, 0, and 1, 2, 3, 3, 0. And now we can draw our line through here. It goes up like this, and up like this. And notice we don't have to worry about any patterns. We just need to know these three points, and we get our graph in its entirety. Okay, I'd like to look at one more example, just to help emphasize this a little bit. Suppose that f of x is minus 2x squared plus 12x minus 5. So here, we first start by finding h. h is minus b over 2a, so that's minus 12 over 2 times minus 2, which is, signs change, 12 over 4 or 3. Our k then is f of 3, so minus 2 times 3 squared plus 12 times 3 minus 5. 3 squared is 9 times minus 2 is minus 18. 12 times 3 is 36 minus 5, so this becomes 18 minus 5 or 13. So my vertex is at 313. All right, we now go to our y-intercept. Our y-intercept we get for free. If we plug 0 in, we get minus 5 out. And finally, for our x-intercept, minus 2 times minus 5 is 10. There's no factors of 10 that add up to 12, so this is going to be radical, and so we're not going to graph it. It's not worth finding it because it's not easy to factor. So we're going to skip the x-intercepts. We draw in 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's our vertex. We know that we have a y-intercept at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 down. And notice that's 3 away here, so let's go another 3 past the vertex and put a point at 6 minus 5. So it's got the same y value, and it's the same distance from our vertex. Now all we have to do is draw in our graph, and we get our solution. Notice the minus 2 says it's going down, and it does, in fact, go down, just like we expect.